Hi guys, it's Majesty Bianca here with the Financial Drive Through again, and it's good to be back. Today, I want to talk about the current state of Bitcoin in the market, uh, basically cryptocurrencies in general, the general outlook, because I stumbled upon this tweet from Bitcoin Birch, and he says, if you're looking for a bear case, this is the most overbought Bitcoin has been on the daily since 20K. So his question is moon or wrecked? Now, if you're a trader, you probably understand what he's talking about right there. He's talking about what's called the RSI. Uh, this is it right here. You could actually see this indicator over here at the bottom of the screen. And what the RSI does is it basically studies the speed and change of price movement. And it basically measures market sentiment on a scale of zero to 100. When the RSI is above 70, the market is said to be overbought. And if it's below 30 over here, it's said to be oversold. At the time of making this video, the RSI is at 83.1525. So that's definitely, definitely overbought. And so the way this plays out is if the market continues the way it's going, it's definitely going to get exhausted and basically should result in a crash, a price crash. And um, yeah, in this video, I just really want to talk about my uh, thoughts on that and point you in the direction of a couple headlines I find very bullish regardless of this. The uh, first article on my list is this one from Wimplo. Western Union has announced a collaboration with the e-wallet startup coins.ph. Now, this partnership was announced on the 3rd of April this month and basically will allow Filipinos to conduct cross-border money transfers effortlessly. Now, I've personally been following the whole cross-border remittance payment idea for some time. I'm linking some of my previous videos at the top of the screen right now. And it's been one of the use cases for cryptocurrencies that I kind of fancy the most because especially being from Nigeria, I understand the need to send money across borders in a timely manner. And I mean, this is something that people in a lot of first world countries take for granted because I mean, they just never have to. Now coins.ph is currently the only blockchain based firm in Asia to regulate with both virtual currency and electronic money issuer licenses from the central bank. They are offering Filipino services such as remittances, bill payments, digital currency purchases and even mobile airtime. So I mean this is a big one. Now sometime last year, I think it was in December of 2018, uh, Western Union did announce a partnership with Ripple Labs and so this whole thing just ties into crypto use cases the way I see it. It's building a foundation for the future and it's really going to, you know, enhance adoption. A lot of people in the crypto space are openly against Ripple because of um, the fact that they work so closely with banks and all they stand for. But the remittance market is something that I think is going to fuel the industry in a way that people are really not expecting or really not focusing on. So it's definitely something I want folks to look at. I posted this on my Instagram page the other day and seriously, I was laughing my ass off. When you go to the crypto meetup and the guy running it has a Ripple t-shirt on, just get me out of here. And obviously it's an inside joke that only people in this space will probably get, but I mean, it, it speaks for itself. Ripple isn't getting much love from the cryptocurrency space, but that isn't stopping the fact that they're actually effecting change and they are strongly pushing for adoption even though it's coming through the banking industry, it's definitely going to bring with it its own stream of regulations and order. And I guess that's something a lot of people just don't want. I'm at the point where I'm looking at cryptocurrency long term and I'm thinking to myself, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Everything is going to work towards the bigger picture. And I think that's that's the outlook that I want everybody watching this to gather. So, um, yes, definitely you should check out the Instagram page. It's the underscore financial underscore drive through. I encourage people to actually follow that on Instagram. I'm going to post everything that you need in the details as usual. So definitely, definitely check that out for me. And um, on to our next headline. Opera announces brand new browser for Mac, Windows and Linux with a crypto wallet, Web3 Explorer and a free VPN. So looking into the article, Opera wants to make sure users stay safe and in control of their browsing and the browser is designed to give people a sense of control over their online lives and a glimpse into the web of the future. Now when speaking about the web of the future, they're talking about their Web 3.0. Again, these are all new fundamentals that I think are going to play a role in price action and the market structure. So I think it's, it's stuff people need to look at. I would like a world where people focus less on price that they see on coin market cap coin paprika and any other um, coin listing website that they have out there i feel people need to start focusing on the big picture and targeting specific investments and areas to put your money in just so that they can actually make something out of the future it's a big picture mindset people that is what we're going for the idea is that you're going to be able to sign transactions with your smartphone now in practice whenever they need to identify themselves to a web3 website or sign a transaction on the blockchain 
users are going to get a notification on their smartphone which they can confirm in the same way they unlock their system for example facial recognition fingerprints a pin so um, these are just options that's out there now they went on to talk about the vpn services i think everybody especially everybody and their mother who's into crypto is probably going to be interested in vpns for one reason or the other i mean you may want to be able to buy cryptocurrencies and you're in a country that you know the platform doesn't support and you need a vpn well opera is trying to take take that out of the mix for you i mean so there you have it opera is doing its own thing facebook is also doing its own thing facebook is reportedly seeking one billion dollars in venture capital funds for a stable coin now they want to do facebook coin we've seen uh, jp morgan do jpm coin and we've seen a lot of other stable coins coming out since the whole tether fiasco so there's 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 something in this there's been no progress of how the development process is being carried out officially released by facebook so i mean we could all hold our horses a bit but it's highly likely that this is true because facebook has been planning this since last year there's been a lot of talk on the internet about that there's a tweet here from nathaniel popper he says update on facebook's currency sources tell me facebook is now looking to get vc firms to invest in the facebook cryptocurrency project we reported on earlier this year now he hears they're targeting big sums as much as one billion dollars like we've said and he goes on to suggest that the involvement of outside investors in the project is going to help the project come off with an image of being completely decentralized which we will be staying true to the whole blockchain idea which is everything that people do not like about ripple because ripple is very very centralized so uh facebook coin let me know what you think about this do you think this is going to be substantial competition for the other stable coins out there in particular jpm coin with this twist and spin that you're trying to bring on it now as always everybody who's bringing out a new coin is going to try and tell you why theirs is different so uh, here they're saying this stable coin will also be different than most as it will be supported by a basket of foreign currencies. Let me know what you think. And that said, let's take a look at another headline. Now EOS has just been listed on Coinbase Pro. This happened on Monday. Coinbase announced that they're adding EOS, Augur's Rep, and MakerDAO's Maker to its professional trading platform. Naturally, you would expect that this would probably come with like a boom in price. If we take a look on Coin Paprika right now, let's see. EOS is actually up by 2.05% in 24 hours, and in the last seven days, it's been up by 18.53. Now, obviously, we can't say that it's just that single headline or the fact that that happened that's put EOS over there because EOS has absolutely been crushing it for some time now. You can see Maker, for example, is in the red. And uh, you could possibly say not affected, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, who can really tell in the crypto space, right? Uh, Augur's rep is also down, but they have been up by 20.97% in the last seven days. So again, go figure. It's, it's one of those things. But good news though is that they've been listed on Coinbase Pro and this actually does bring more options as always because the whole idea is to give customers as many options as possible. Now the US exchange announced that the customers will be able to start depositing these tokens as of 7pm UTC with EOS and August Rep now available in every jurisdiction that Coinbase Pro services except New York State. Okay. Uh, Maker, on the other hand, can be bought in all jurisdictions outside the United States. So, I mean, it's always good to know uh, you have to follow the regulations just so you know what you're able to do if you're interested in investing in these coins. Now, users won't be able to trade right away and the addition of the tokens will go through four phases. Now, for around 12 hours after the initial announcement, customers can only transfer EOS, Rep and Maker to their accounts. And then for a short period afterwards, they would only be able to post limit orders which won't be matched for one minute. One of the bigger things that I think is uh, going to help the markets is the fact that G20 members are supposed to meet over crypto regulations. Now again, I have been going on and on about regulations in most of my videos because I was part of the people who got caught up in the ICO boom in 2017. I would say I was lucky the most because I'm not exactly an all-in guy. I still try to remain as practical as possible. But I also have regrets because I know I could have made a lot more in the time and space that was out there. So uh, regulations actually did mess a lot of us up because I obviously invested in one or two ICO projects which the SEC has now deemed you know, illegal. And, I mean, it sucks. There are a lot of projects that I personally believed in. Uh, one of them is Envion, Envion AG. I'm going to make a video about what's going on with Envion because, um, I mean, that one was quite close to home for me because I, I truly believed in it. Now, did I overinvest in it? No. So again, 
that's fine. So to cut a long story short, crypto regulations are something that are very important to me because I mean, if you do not know about the regulatory stance around a coin or any investment that you get into, you stand to risk a lot more than just your money. You risk your time, you risk, there's so much that you put into it and all. And it really sucks when the SEC comes around and they deem something that you thought was a short deal, a security and say the company didn't follow the right rules and everything. So I mean, regulations are a big deal. Regulations are going to make or break crypto. And the moment people start facing this fact, I think the better it will be for all of us, right? So the G20 members are going to meet over cryptocurrency regulations. And to me, this is a big deal because the major reasons that big investors and I mean, a lot of other people aren't investing in crypto is because they're not sure of the regulatory stance behind things, you know? So um, issues to consider, anti-money laundering, counter-terrorism, those are the things that the government keeps hitting us with in the crypto space. And it's, it's going to continue until we get an established global view point towards things. You know, I mean, there are certain countries who are more regulated than others. Obviously, they're, they're setting the pace. And then obviously there are people in unregulated countries who feel they're benefiting from the fact that it's unregulated and they can get away without paying taxes and all that stuff. So one of the ways that this is being combated is by the creation of crypto anti-money laundering and counterterrorism laws, which will be put in place by the G20 by June 2019. The G20 pulls together all their member countries and the central bank governors and finance ministers. And I mean, they just sit down and they hash these things out and they usually have something to say. I did a video about this i think last year when they met and i'm linking that up again at the top of the screen so you can feel free to check that out it's usually something that brings uh, some sanity to the markets and so i'm looking forward to this one as well especially because there's a lot of bullish news in the markets i'm actually quite optimistic about how this can play out now the end goal of the meeting will be to create and agree on a framework that will combat terrorism and money laundering through the use of crypto so one of the ways this is done is by targeting anti-anonymity and most likely laws will be established by the G20 countries that will require the identification of customers of crypto businesses and exchanges. Sure, some people are going to frown at this because everybody wants privacy in crypto, but again, big picture guys, big picture. So I'm going to leave this as is and we're going to look at the last headline that I have here. China might ban Bitcoin mining, okay? Now, uh, China basically owns the mining industry in crypto as far as i'm concerned but let me don't, don't take my word for it here the article says chinese miners are the major players in the bitcoin mining industry and they gave an example saying at the time of the writing btc.com and antpool are both owned by chinese mining hardware bitmain hold almost that two percent of the entire bitcoin network hash rates which essentially measures how much computing power is needed to maintain the network so now I want you to pause and think about this, okay? If China wants to ban Bitcoin mining, you're already thinking, oh my God, this is going to be very, very bad. But the article brings a new angle to it, right? Here they say if this ban does end up happening, it's more likely to push Bitcoin prices up rather than down because the loss of cheap Chinese electricity would raise the mining costs, which is a net positive on price. So yes, take some time. Think about this. Think about this. If they do shift everything out of China, what's going to happen is that these Chinese miners are going to be forced to move to other countries to actually set up shop. And, and, and if you think about it, that's actually going to further decentralize Bitcoin mining. You know, it will be spread more easily or reduce the chances for a 51% attack. It will reduce all the hubbub and all the talk. And again, it would drive the price of Bitcoin up because that would raise the mining costs and uh, you could probably start seeing things like Genesis mining and all the other cloud mining programs that coming up again. And so grand scheme of things, let me know what you think about this. Are you excited about this? Are you worried? What exactly is going on in your head? Let me know what you think about the current state of Bitcoin and how any of this, any of this stuff could possibly affect it, both positively or negatively. So if you like this kind of content, definitely smash the like button. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and that bell icon so you can catch my videos as they drop. My name is Majesty Biang and I'll see you on the next drive through. Thank you.